We move on to the question 18 that is about tangent lines, velocity and derivatives. Here we have a real world problem. A pitch is struck by a bat with a mass of m kilograms. Suppose the initial speed of the ball after being struck is given by speed of speed with respect to mass is 185 m minus 15 divided by m plus 0.15. Now if you know baseball there is a pitch that is a ball being thrown at the bat and the bat and you know the batter hits the ball that's how it works so the bat weight matters because as the weight of the bat is increasing you can see the speed after a certain level you know plateaus in the sense becomes same but for the initial values say for example you have 0.5 uh, kilograms of mass for the bat the speed is around this, whereas 1 kg is over here, it varies. Now, what did they ask us? Find an equation for instantaneous rate of change for the initial speed of the ball. I hope you remember this formula. Speed, when derived, derived is by d by dx. What do you get? You get the velocity, rate of change, basically. So now, over here, this is the speed equation, right? If you derive it, what should you get? you will get the velocity or that is instantaneous rate of change. So how do you derive this? Since it's, uh, you know, quotient rule, there's a term above in the numerator and in the denominator. We have to recall the formula u divided by v. When you derive it, it becomes down will be v squared. Up above will be u dash v minus u v dash. Before solving this, let us write the given. What is the given? I mean, like in u and v terms, u is equal to 185 m minus 15. V is basically m plus 0.15. Derivative of u is just 185, isn't it? Why? Because when you have x to the power 1 or m to the power 1, it is 1 itself the derivation say x power 1 is 1 whereas if it was derivation of x squared it becomes the power rule 2 comes down to x and this reduces by 1 even over here power rule is used 1 comes down it's 1 x 1 minus 1 is 0 and x to the power 0 is 1 so it's, it's only 1 remains and then imagine there's a constant term d by dx of minus 5 constants are always zero so here therefore minus 15 becomes zero it's basically minus zero this is it and what about v dash v dash is just one but because m is derived to one this is zero so now let's derive it the derivation of speed that is basically velocity of uh, with respect to the mass m the variable over here is m that's why we write it m now what happens u dash what is u dash it's just 185 so you can just write 185 and what is next v what is v value it is m plus 0.15 minus what is u then u is 185 m minus 15 and lastly what do we have v dash is multiplied by 1 this whole thing divided by v squared that is m plus we have 0.15 so this is how we substitute now this is not done we can simplify further the velocity i'll just write velocity because derivation of speed is velocity is multiply this 185 inside and one inside will be the same thing so it'll be 185 m now what is 0 0.15 times 185 to be a small number will be less than 50 so We'll just leave it for now. We'll write it later. And there is minus 185m. And this minus, my, see minus is multiplied here and over here. This becomes plus 15 divided by m plus 0.15. Now this cancels with this. So you're remaining with a number and 15. When you add it up, it's going to be some value. Let's just look into the answer directly. So that number added with 15 is 42.75. That, that means it's 27.75 here. And then over here, I forgot to write the square, which is very important, v square. 
So this is the derivative. Now that said, you have to use the quotient rule and derive the problem. And over here we get this is the instantaneous rate of change. And now the second part is use a calculator to graph the equation you found in part A. So now whatever you just now found over here, we can graph it. Now there are various ways to graph it. Let's do the table method. All I'll do is mode 7 for table and type this equation over here 42.75 divided by m is written as alpha x plus 0.15 and close the bracket and square it up. And now what you do is press equal to now ignore this part. Now look at this one over here. They have taken mass of 0 to 2. So let's start with 0 and at 2 because they are also told in the question from 0 to 2. And uh, what step let's take? Let's take step of 0 0.5 and the values are over here. We can see here uh, it starts with 1900 at 0. That means it's very, very high. And then it comes down at 0 0.5. It's, um, you know, reduced incredibly. That's only 100. So at 0 0.5, somewhere over here, I think so this is 0 0.5, it'll be 100. Then you can see at 1, it's very less, 32. And then as it goes down, it see nears to very, very, very low value. So this is the correct graph. Now what's happening here? As the mass was increasing, the speed increased, right? But here it's the other way around. As mass increases, the velocity reduces. So the instantaneous rate of change of initial speed of ball decreases drastically as the mass of the bat increases. So this is what we understand for the mass 0 to 2. And if the mass of the bat varies inversely with the hitter's control okay, of the swing, it is, is it wise to use a bat that weighs 1.05 kilograms rather than a bat weighs 0 0.8 kilograms? Explain your reasoning. Now, before looking at the answer, I, I think it's always the lower mass because we saw here, see, the velocity in, reduces drastically. Over here, there is a speed increase, yes, but it's very less. We are talking about 0 0.8 and 1.05. So 1.05 somewhere over here. The speed, yes, it's increased, but very little. But look over here. This is 1. So 0 0.8 somewhere over here. And one point something it's it's a big fall because you saw the values it's in thousand hundred the fall is much much bigger than what you can see over here so here what they are doing is they're finding at zero point see the equation you found out right the derived equation for the instantaneous velocity from the graph also you can find it out at 0 0.8 what's the value and at 0 point uh, 1.05 what's the value you can see the velocity is 47 and 29. So this suggests instantaneous rate of change for the initial speed. That's the velocity. The ball is higher with the lighter bat. Now the speed over here, yes, although heavier bat will have a greater speed, but it's not, uh, you know, wise to use it because the reduction cannot be compensated by just a small increase. So this is why it's better to go with the smaller bat. And over here, they have clearly mentioned the heater's control of the swing. It's inversely. So, you know, as mass increases, it reduces, right? So that's the thing. And now, if at all, this were, these two values were very close to each other, and this was more, see over here, 0 0.8 over here, and 1.05 over here. If this was big increase, then you should have told higher mass, but it's other way around over here. So that's how we solve that problem. Now we have some, you know, uh, quotient rule problems. We have just now solved the quotient rule. Let me do this one. It might seem a little difficult because these are all simple. Now here, just remember the rule. U by V, the derivative of it is U dash V minus U V dash divided by V squared. Now what is U? U is Q to the power 4 plus 2 Q squared plus 3. And V is Q cube minus 2. And let's derive U dash. U dash means it'll be du by dx. Now, now it's over here Q, so du by dq. But anyways, just derive it. It'll be power rule 4Q to the power 3. So what happens is whatever is the power comes down, and this reduces by 1, 4Q cube 
plus. Now this 2 comes down and multiplies with this 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. Q only. Why? Because 2 minus 1 is 1. And 3 becomes a constant. It dissolves. It's not there. And what about V dash? This is 3 Q squared. That's it. And minus 2 goes off. Now, sometimes if you're getting confused with Q and all, you can just rewrite this question. Instead of Q, you can write it as x to the power 4 plus, you know, 2x squared plus 3. You just change it to x. That is also fine. Okay. As long as you understand whichever you're comfortable with, just go with it. Okay. Uh, so you can change it like this and solve. Over here, it will be mass of m of x fine your answer will be correct but what you can do is finally whatever the answer is there in terms of x right put it back to q i will show in a while now see now we have all the values of u u dash v v dash so we can use the formula now what is u dash it is four times q to the power three and we have plus four q what about v so multiply this with v that is q to the power 3 minus z minus u is again q to the power 4 plus 2 q squared plus 3 multiplied with v dash is 3 q squared divided by what is v q q minus 2 the whole squared now we have to multiply the above terms and try to simplify as much as possible so multiply this this and even minus 2 both the sides so it's going to be a long one. It will be 4 q to the power 6 plus 4 q to the power 4 minus 8 q to the power 3 minus 8 q. And what about over here? It's only a single term multiplied to all the three terms. It will be 3 q to the power 6. So now it's going to be minus. Okay, All the terms will be minus because they are plus over here. So over here it will be 3 times 2 is 6 q to the power 4 and lastly we have 9 plus 9 q squared now this entire thing is divided by what q to the power 3 minus 2 the whole square now this is fine leave leave this denominator as it is just simplify the numerator how can we simplify it you can see it's four uh, all the same variables mark them up over here it is 4 minus 3 that is 1 only q power 6 remains 1 q power 6 is just q power 6 what about q power 4 we have 2 that is 4 minus 6 it will be minus 2 q power 4 and what is q power 3 it is minus 8 q power 3 and what about this plus 9 q squared and lastly we have minus 8 q divided by q minus 2 the whole squared now please don't mind my q my q is similar to a 9 itself but i hope you understand that so that must be the answer if you are done in terms of x it would be x to the power 6 x to the power 4 and everything but at the end just put it back to q because originally it was a q one so you can see this let's just check answer yes it's okay now i have made a mistake see this one it should be minus isn't it because all the terms will be minus so this is minus so this is also minus so here it is minus and over here as well it must be minus itself so that is the correct answer so please do solve all these problems by yourselves and then check for the answers even over here, just the quotient rule, nothing else. The denominator, leave it as it is. But if you can simplify, then well and good. Over here, when you solve it, you can simplify it further and get to this form. If it is more than monomial, that is like if it's binomial or something, just leave the denominator as it is. Even over here, pretty simple problems. Now, what I would suggest over here is this one don't directly solve see here you can make this a bit simpler how take w as common out when you take w common out what happens it'll be 1 plus w to the power 4 divided by w squared squared cancel with this and you're remaining with 1 plus w to the power 4 
divided by w. Now solve it up, denominator w squared and numerator, simplify and everything, you're going to get this answer. So whenever you have an opportunity to simplify, do that so your derivation will be quicker and easier. Last problem in this topic is about a real world problem and it's about Mahmood and Muhammad are selling sweatshirts to raise money for a football team. Their weekly revenue is R of X, the revenue with respect to X is equal to 0 0.125X cube and so on, where X is the cost of one sweatshirt. So if they sell one sweatshirt, this X will be one and that's the revenue one. So what they, what they ask is they have to just derive it. So what is the derivation of this? When you derive power rule, 3 comes down, it will be 0 0.375 x power 2 because you have to reduce the power by 1 minus 11 times 2 is 22.5 x. And then what do we have? We have only x, this dissolves and it will be only 250 remaining. So this is r dash of x. This is the derivation of this. Find the solutions of R dash of x is equal to 0. You just start put in the calculator and solve it. Let's take our calculator. All you do is go to mode 5 and let's press 3 for quadratic. Type in the coefficients. 0 0.375 is the first one minus 22.5 and lastly we have 250. And here what are the values 45.27 and 14.72 let's just look here yes these are the answers the first one derivation yes that's the thing now the last one what do the solutions you found in part b represent in terms of the given situation okay now we should know some basic understanding of uh, you know derivatives what exactly is derivative Derivative, definition-wise, is the slope of the tangent line. So now if you have this particular equation, right? Since it's x cubed, imagine it goes like this. So the derivation at any point will be the slope of the tangent line. So it just touches one point, the tangent, okay? Wherever it's the tangent line slope. So if we have, say, minus 2, that's the slope. It tells us what is happening. It's going downwards. The graph is going downwards at a slope of 2, negative 2 that is. So here we basically found the equation for the slope of the tangent line. And when we made it equal to 0, what happened? When we make that slope line equal to 0, it basically is like a flat line, isn't it? So we found two flat lines. So it will be either maximum or minimum. So when you solve these two, you will get the x value, which has to be the maximum or minimum. So what is the cost of sweatshirt? It's either 14.72 or 45.28. So which one? You basically just put it back in the calculator over here, put it in this equation and see. If you put 14.72, uh, I'm not sure what's the answer, but if it's a big value, then that is the desired one this one is too big i think so you will you will get a negative value over here why because see there is square and cube and square is having negative sign so 45 is a substantially large number and squaring that would be a huge negative number whereas this one is reasonable you might get positive over here so one of that will be a maximum value let's see which one directly Say the 14.72 represents the price Mahmood and Muhammad should charge per sweatshirt to make the maximum possible revenue. Uh, the solution of you know 45.28 is not relevant because the revenue is zero when x is 40. I think so. After 40 onwards, it's less than zero, so this will become a negative number. Whereas 1.72 is the price that must be charged. If you put away your 14.72, uh, you will get a bigger number compared to this. So that's what it is. And that's the end of this question. I hope you have found it helpful. If you have any doubts, post them in the comments. And if you see any other comments, if any other student has asked doubts, if you know the answers, please do respond to those comments and uh, tell your friends what the answers are. I will see you all in the next video.